These are the times home cooks decided to cheat on Master Chef. And what this contestant did was completely inexcusable. As you may know, timing is everything in the kitchen. One misstep can send everything into chaos. Red team, stop! Stop! And that's exactly what Bowen's leadership stint in Season 9, Episode 6 proved to be. So what happened is, Bowen decided to bark a few instructions to SJ Yun, trying to speed things up a bit. Matt, I need somebody to fry the fish. You don't need to go down now. I don't care. Well, he was probably taking his job as the leader all too seriously, but sadly, he forgot about something really important. Most fish require very specific timing in their preparation. If you just jump the gun and cook it way too early, its delicate texture and flavor can end up cold, soggy, and just plain gross. And Bowen's decision to rush things wasn't exactly lauded by the rest of his team. In fact, they even tried to talk him out of it. Even though I may not agree with him, at the end of the day, I'll take whatever task that you know the, the captain tells me to do. But you know Bowen, he was dead set on starting the fish early. And guess what? Chef Ramsay caught them red-handed. Bring me the tray of fish is cooked! Yes, chef. Oh yeah, he wasn't one bit impressed with Bowen's move. And look at that one. That's not even cooked. That's ice cold in there. And unfortunately, poor SJ was the one who took the brunt of his wrath. I thought you'd know better. Yes, chef. I'm begging you now, get your together. Viewers were pissed at Bowen because he remained silent while SJ took the heat for him. One viewer pointed out how they had huge respect for SJ for owning it and not throwing shade at Bowen, although he really was the one at fault there. You see, all Bowen had to do was work with patience. While Bowen screwed up in a hurry, here comes a team who just did the opposite. So it was the first team challenge of season 6, and what was on the menu? Hamburgers with onion rings and coleslaw, plus a fish and chips dish, all for the hungry crowds at Knott's Berry Farm. But here's the kicker, there were no set number of diners. Whoever happened to walk through that gate needed to be fed by both teams. And to spice things up a bit, every guest had the chance to cast their vote for the winning dish. So there was Dara leading the charge for the blue team. But right from the get-go, the blue team found themselves without much of a rhythm. Now here comes the craziest part. With just 10 minutes left on the clock, not a single portion of fish had even gone anywhere near a pan. How many portions you got cooked, Katrina? None. None. Blue team! Yes. There's no fish cooked! Chef Ramsay immediately rounded up the blue team to give them a stern warning. This is insane! No fish cooked! He was so livid that he straight up told Dara to do this. Look at me. Yes, Should we just cut to the chase and go straight to a pressure test? This is insane! Uh-huh. It was beyond clear that she wasn't up for the challenge. And so, she was asked to head straight to the pressure test. Now, with Dara effectively put in a timeout, Claudia had to step in to rescue the fish station, and she eventually managed to nail it. But what this next home cook did is probably the most extreme kind of cheating I've ever seen on MasterChef. As you may know, Season 12 brought back some culinary veterans for an all-star showdown, including some junior contestants too. But here's the burning question, did the home cooks learn from their past mistakes? Well, they were about to find out. And what better trial by fire than having to feed the US Coast Guard? I mean, can you even imagine the pressure? Now, each team was tasked with preparing a hearty meal for over 100 hungry servicemen and women. The blue team, consisting of cooks from seasons 1 to 7, faced off against the red team, featuring home cooks from seasons 8 to 11. Alejandro stepped up as the captain for the red team, while Christian led the charge for the blue team. And the stakes? Well, one person from the losing team would face elimination. So, the red team kicked things off with some sticks. But hold up, Chef Ramsay caught wind that they were serving up cold cuts. The tray's cold, the steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send f out. Not exactly the kind of hot start they were aiming for, right? Of course, Chef Ramsay being the guy that he is, wasn't pleased. He made sure that they turned up the heat with some very choice words. And in a wild twist, he shuffled the Coast Guard over to the blue team's turf instead. But guess what? The blue team wasn't doing much better either. We have no mash. Oh my god. The mashed potatoes were still cooking, and Chef Ramsay's frustration, well, oh, it was practically radiating through the screen. Despite it all, though, the initial feedback the diners gave seemed surprisingly positive for both teams. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Anyway, in the midst of serving up food for the Coast Guard, a raw steak made an unwelcome appearance, and Chef Ramsay, in pure Ramsay fashion, did this. Oh man! Well, thankfully, the fish were probably gonna appreciate that much more than the Coast Guard. But brace yourself for the real shocker of the afternoon. 
Alejandro, undeterred by the steak now sleeping with the fishes, decided to play a risky game. He picked up a tray of steaks that had fallen down onto the floor by mistake and tossed them right back onto the grill. They're gonna get cooked. Seriously, how dumb could you be? Well, apparently, it was enough to kill the bacteria it picked up from the floor. At least according to our man Alejandro. So, no harm, no foul, right? Uh, I shouldn't even need to mention Chef Ramsay's reaction to this. You think I'm gonna keep you as a captain? I stuck yeah. them on the grill because I thought I'd kill the bacteria. Yeah, there was no coming back from that tongue lashing. Anyway, one user pointed out how Alejandro didn't learn one thing since his last stint on the show. Two of his teammates told him that the meat wasn't done and that it was too rare and were even proven right, and yet all he said to them was, trust me, trust me. This guy just doesn't listen. And then there was the whole drop steak thing. Anyway, with the chaos reaching epic proportions, Chef Ramsay took the opportunity to fire Alejandro as the team captain and appointed Michael to take charge instead. Just when the red team was careening over the edge of disaster, Chef Ramsay's quick thinking of appointing a better leader saved the day. Uh-huh, the man is built for that kind of thing. But most of the time, those warnings of his fall on some real deaf ears. And the result is never good. Well, what happened in Season 4, Episode 5 was the absolute epitome of that. The challenge was that the contestants had to form teams and whip up a feast for a bunch of pint-sized food critics. Now, Jordan took the reins as the captain of the blue team and was tasked with satisfying the taste buds of an entire elementary school. I'm sure all of you with kids can understand how tall of a task that is. In his lineup, he recruited Adriana, Kathy, Howard, Johnny, Savannah, Eddie, James, and Chrissy. Looking like a dream team, right? Well, on paper you'd think so. Anyway, what exactly was their mission, you ask? It was to create a menu that included turkey meatballs with pasta, green beans, and an apple crisp for dessert. Sounds delicious, right? But wait, 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 hold on. Even before things really got going, Chef Ramsay had some major doubts. How many meatballs per portion? we will probably be right, right around two. If it's going to be short, two we'll check the balls. So two balls. Yeah. I mean, feeding 300 kids? That's a whole lot of meatballs. We're talking about a thousand or more, minimum. Chef Ramsay knew that there was no way a bunch of amateurs could figure that out, especially with a time crunch looming over them. 600 meatballs are gonna make? 600 meatballs. Oh my God. The pressure was on, the clock was ticking, and you couldn't help but wonder, would the blue team somehow be able to pull off this miracle? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it right now if they did, would I? The blue team stumbled right out of the gate, starting fashionably late. Guys, we just started making meatballs. 20 more to get to 600 meatballs. And amidst the chaos, Chrissy, with some kind of culinary sixth sense, saw the impending catastrophe as well. The time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just stupid. I mean, that's not a superpower or anything, it's just basic knowledge a chef should have. Or like, basic math skills. Hopefully those kids were being taught better than them. Meanwhile, the judges, who were eagerly awaiting a feast, were dumbfounded by the sluggish progress of the blue team. More than 600 meatballs were on the line, and the team's sluggish speed wasn't exactly moving things along. As the clock kept ticking, the blue team found themselves in a very tough situation where they shockingly couldn't make all those meatballs. And in a desperate attempt to salvage this sinking ship, a tactical shift was in order and it needed to come fast. You need to start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay was completely livid. With every passing minute, his tolerance dwindled further and further. And that's when Jordan came into the picture, and well, he had a weird solution. In a light bulb moment, he decided to switch gears and whip up some meat sauce instead. We're just gonna do a meat sauce. Don't even, hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. But guess what? Things were about to get real saucy. With barely a minute left on the clock, the green beans were still having some major issues. One minute to go. Bean salad, I need it ASAP. But they were really just a symptom of the bigger issues at hand. In the grand scheme of these unfortunate events, a trifecta of poor decisions, a dash of terrible teamwork, and a generous sprinkle of abysmal leadership, the teammates crumbled under the pressure like never before. However, what happened in this next episode will make you question everything you know about the basics of cooking duck. Okay, so stick with me for a second because Sean and Katie had their sights set high. Together, they decided to whip up scallops for the appetizer and duck breast for the main course. And let's be real, these proteins are no walk in the park at the best of times. They're both real fickle in terms of timing. But well, how else could they prove their worth? So these contestants decided to go all in with this huge risk, hoping for some huge rewards on the other end of this challenge. 
So Juni took the helm for the blue team, while Julia commanded the red team. This was a strategic move that added an extra layer of unpredictability to the kitchen showdown. And once they stepped into the cooking tent, it was game on. The planning commenced and things got real strategic real quick. Julia faced a bit of resistance to her menu ideas initially. But like a true captain, she held her ground and rallied her team's support. Now, Chef Ramsay was on a mission to check the red team's progress. Little did he know he was about to uncover a disaster the likes of which he'd only seen on Kitchen Nightmares before. Stop! Turns out the team had seasoned the duck before cooking it, a move that even the rookiest of rookies knows spells disaster. Salt pulls moisture out of things after all. And Chef Ramsay's fury reached new heights when he figured out what they'd done. We never season them until you cook them. Because when you hit the pan, there's gonna be watery. Would the red team recover from this seasoning setback, or would they serve up a ducking disaster? Well, you'll need to wait for an upcoming video of mine to find out. But for now, nothing could prepare me for this bizarre wait. Get a cloth and dry them. Get rid of the seasoning quickly. Yeah, it was one of those kind of moves that would make Chef Ramsay question his life choices. And not surprisingly, what happened next was truly shocking. Blue team, we're all over the place. No one's communicating, and the captain's disappeared. Meanwhile, over on the blue team, it seemed like they too were on a mission to test Chef Ramsay's patience right from the start. And yeah, their menu idea raised more than a few eyebrows. Put your hands in the air if you've ever seen an orange zested mash in any restaurant anywhere in the world. The famous chef even called their idea downright foolish before the blue team had to do some serious menu soul searching. He demanded better ideas, prompting them to reshuffle their entire meal plan in a race against the clock. So what do you think happened? Would the blue team rise from the ashes of their initial blunder, or was Chef Ramsay about to declare a culinary state of emergency? Huh, just when you thought the blue team had weathered the storm, turns out they went all in for yet another culinary tempest. The party have sat down, and the puree's raw. Blue team, we're all over the place. Yup, they were all set to serve a puree, but the pureeing part wasn't exactly flawlessly executed. As if that wasn't enough, Juni walked in with a whole plate of garlic mashed potatoes which were equally time consuming and, dare I say, uninspiring. Meanwhile, Shanika tried to steer the ship in the right direction, offering some guidance of her own, but Juni clung to his garlic-laden dream with as much stubbornness as he could possibly muster. In Juni's world, the garlic mashed potatoes were the pinnacle of wedding feast perfection. I mean, from my perspective, I think it would put off the bride and groom from kissing each other, but you do you, man. Anyway, Chef Ramsay didn't have the patience to wait and watch. He stepped in once again and let the blue team have it. How does that become a stunning mash? What's more, upon learning Shanika's wisdom, Chef Ramsay urged the team to follow her lead. And yeah, Juni eventually conceded, but that didn't mean that he didn't find himself at a crossroads. The stakes were very high, and Chef Ramsay had a crucial decision to make. You are not going to captain this team any longer. Have a meeting and somebody step up and run this team. If not, I'm going to run it. In a dramatic turn of events, the famous chef stripped Juni of his rank. Taylor immediately stepped into the role with clear vocalization of ideas and strategic direction. That was her signature style in action. It was a clear contrast to Juni's mismanagement. Eventually, the blue team, under Taylor's guidance, managed to salvage the situation and finish things off on a high note. However, let's be honest, victory eluded them, leaving them with a taste of both redemption and the bitter reality of a culinary near miss. So there you have it, Times contestants cheated on Master Chef. Do you know any other moments where home cooks resorted to cheating and got caught by the judges? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. If you want to keep the discussion going, make sure to check out my channel's Discord server for free. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.